Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. G. Martinez, and this is your 8th grade science channel, and we are going to be looking at another uh, boring video. All right, that didn't sound that good. All right, we're going to be watching another video, but this one is going to be on tides, all right? It's going to be spring tides and nip tides. So let's get started. This is TIX 8.7C, where you're supposed to relate the position of the moons and the sun to their effects on ocean tides. Okay, first we're going to be looking at a couple of uh, nice pictures that I found on the internet, like for example this one. This is in Canada. You can see the difference between the low tide and the high tide. Notice that it's about, I'll say about good 8 meters, 9 meters difference between the high tides and low tides. Alright, so that's a lot of distance right here. I don't know how many meters is that, but that's a lot. You can see the people over here, so you can see the scale. So it's probably about one and a half meters or two meters height. Well, that's a lot of it. You can use the scale. All right, so that's one of them. This is another one. Look at the difference. Now, here we're talking about probably, I don't know, this has to be way more than 14, 15 meters. Between here and here. Well, look at this one. So, all right, let's move on. So yes, there's a lot of extremes between high tides and low tides throughout the planet, especially in some areas that are away from the equator, kind of like uh, towards the poles. <clears throat> this is another example, but this one happens um, south, um, probably over there down by Brazil. Uh, but here we have people surfing when the tides are coming in. And it looks kind of like a whole wave coming in, but uh, it's just the tide that is coming in when there's a high tide. <coughs> so today we're going to understand the tidal bulge on the planet. We're going to understand the influence of the moon and the sun on our ocean tides. We're also going to understand characteristics of spring tides and know their corresponding moon phases that belong to each type of tide. We're also going to understand characteristics of uh, neap tides and know their corresponding moon phases. We're going to know some testing strategies related to spring and neap tides. That's about it. So let's get started. What is the bulge? First of all, you will ask yourself, what is a bulge? Do you know what a bulge is? Um, hmm. I don't even know what that is. So let's find out. A bulge according to the dictionary, yes, I have to look into the dictionary for that, is a protruding part, an outward curve or a swelling, kind of like a big belly, a panza of somebody that have ate a lot of tamales, right? It's a sudden, usually temporary increase in number or quantity, like a huge amount of water coming in, rushing in at the same time. All right, so this is an example of what a bulge will look like. Notice that you have a huge curve over here on the bottom. All right, but it also has a little stretch over here on the top. So you will ask yourself, what in the world does this has to do with our tides? Well, let's take a look at the next picture. Boom. You see that? That means that this picture has nothing to do with our um, topic of ocean tides. Well, no, not exactly. This, yes, is going to be related to uh, the things that we are going to cover today. <clears throat> the bulge on our planet. We are going to be looking at Earth's tidal bulge is affected by gravitational, gravitational pull created by the moon and the sun. There it is. There's an example of how the bulge of the planet, which is all this section, yeah, that looks the balloon like the balloon that we were looking at a couple of um, a minute ago. See all this area? Yeah, that is kind of like uh, the balloon, right? But the balloon was pointing down where the gravity was actually pulling on the water. Well, it so does over here the moon. The moon pulls on the water that is in the oceans of our planet. And not only that, but it also pulls our planet towards the moon. So yeah, that will be created by the moon. 
But let's not forget that also the sun is creating a bulge. So you see this, the sun. Now, we yes, the sun is also um, another body that is creating gravitational pull, right? So it's pulling on the bulge. But the one that has the strongest influence will be the moon, all right? So keep that in mind. The moon has a bigger influence on the tide than our sun. The moon creates a stronger pull on the tidal bulge because it is a lot closer to the earth. And the sun, although is bigger than the moon, it has a weaker, influ a weaker influence because um, it is actually very far away. So let's take a look at some of the characteristics of spring tides, all right? So we are going to be looking at spring tides. It's not because it's spring or spring break. And you're like, hey, yeah, yeah, spring break. No, that's not the reason why. We call it spring. I have no idea why they call it spring tides. But let's just learn what about the spring tide. All right, so this is a nice picture of what a spring tide looks like, okay? They occur twice per month, uh, especially during the new moon and the full moon so here is the new moon this will be one example when we have a, a spring tide and also during the full moon so yes both of them don't happen at the same time but during the month we will have a new moon and a full moon so we will have two tides in one in one month of course tides are very extreme the high tides are very high they create a straight line between the sun, earth, and the moon. So this goes to the mnemonic um, images, mnemonic phrases, mnemonic things for you to remember that if it makes a straight line between the earth, the sun, and the moons, these are spring tides. During the spring tides, higher tides are higher than normal. Because both the sun and the moon are pulling the tidal bulge from the same direction during the full moon. So let's take a look at the full moon. Well, I shouldn't be from the full moon. That should be from the new moon. All right. You got to put here new moon. All right. So if when we have a new moon. Now, remember when I told you that the moon had a bigger influence on the bulge? Well, now what's happening here is we have the new moon and we also have the sun. Both of them are pulling or stretching the tidal bulge towards them. So now we can have this huge amount of uh, tidal bulge being stretched towards them. All right. So therefore, we can have very extreme high, high tides and extreme low tides also. Tidal bulge is also being pulled opposite in opposite direction during the full moon all right so this is now this is correct the full moon so we have a full moon over here and the full moon is pulling on the bulge towards it but you have the sun on the other side and the sun is also pulling on the bulge so now we have two bodies pulling from both directions kind of like stretching like that like right so that's how um this works and of course, on these areas that the tidal bulge is overimposed, here is going to be high tides. As you can see right here, this is high tide. And there's also high tides over here. And this area is going to have a low tide, just like in this section over here, you're going to have a low tide too. All right. Two high tides and two low tides in 24 hours. For example, if let's say that you are located in this position right here. Yay, right? So you go and spin around the planet. Um, the rotation of the planet takes 24 hours, right? So that means that if you're here in six hours, you are going to be, well, actually, you're going to be on this side of the planet. You are going to be experiencing a high tide. Whoa. So six hours after that, you will be in this position. And now you're going to be experiencing a low tide. Six hours more, you will be in this position. And again, you'll be experiencing a high tide. And once again, six hours more, you're going to be back to your low tide position. Remember, this takes 24 hours for a whole rotation. And that's why we have two high tides and two low tides in 24 hours. <clears throat> Characteristics of neap tides. Now, this one is slightly different from the spring tides. There are two neap tides per month, one during the first and the other one on the third quarter moon. You can see the... 
third quarter moon over here and the first quarter moon over here however this is incorrect they shouldn't be the third quarter they should be the first quarter and this one should be the the third quarter all right why yeah good question anybody has figured out why well probably because these boneheads that created this picture don't know how the first and third quarter moon or the faces of the moons work all right if your new moon is right here facing the sun counterclockwise motion will give you the first quarter on this side and not the third quarter like these boneheads were saying so there you go it happens at a right angle so that is important for you to remember so this is your mnemonic thing you're supposed to remember okay the moons are going to be at a right angle you see this this is a right angle this is 90 degree angle so this is what we call a night uh, a right angle all right so this is when you're going to have niptides and notice that since you have um well skip that these are normal tides because the tidal bulge is being pulled from different angles so now you have the sun is pulling in this direction right so the bulge is gonna be like oh i'm being stretched by the sun right and then you have the moon pulling also at a 90 degree angle so now you have like oh my god i've been pulled by the moon right so since the moon is casting a stronger gravitational pull is gonna win and if you notice on the bulge it's just slightly higher over here towards the moons and lower on the areas that are located towards uh, the sun or opposite to the sun okay so we can see that uh, the moons have a higher influence on the tidal bulge than compared to the sun the moon slightly wins pulling the tidal bulge because it's closer to the earth so therefore oh we forgot to talk about the timing also you are going to have two uh, high tides and two low tides throughout the 24 hour period so that's it today we have learned that what the tidal bulge of the planet is we also learned how the bulge is influenced by the moon and the sun we have learned that the moon has a bigger influence on the bulge as have you as you have seen on the video and the spring tides are very extreme and they happen during the full and new moons right and that neat tides are normal tides that are they occur during the first and third quarter moon so there you go this is probably like the thing that you want to take home today that spring tides are very extreme and they happen during full moon and during the new moons neat tides are very normal and they occur during the first and third quarter moon okay so i think this is all we have for today this is mr j martinez once again with your eighth grade science channel don't forget to subscribe. Go ahead, run, subscribe. See you later.